We live in a spiritual RPG on today's episode of Oblerong Spirituality. <music> Greetings, soul family. I am Oblerong, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me today where we are going to talk about how life is like a spiritual RPG. We're also going to go over the proper gear for your adventure and how to assemble your adventuring team. One way that I found to be very helpful in going out into society is to sort of view it as an adventure. You know, so instead of going grocery shopping, you're now going to the market to get to get a merchant's wares. Instead of, let's say, going into less than favorable situations, you are now going into the den of the dragon's lair. So in pretending that you're going out on a quest, you know, it's not necessarily ignoring reality, it's more sort of augmenting and enhancing reality. Instead of using, you know, instead of using a phone app or something to, to tell you where the items are, you're using elements of a spiritual nature. And of course, with a little practice, it can make a lot of the mundane activities a little bit more worthwhile and a little bit more interesting to do. So if we were to turn our life into an adventure or a quest, then one of the first types of things that we would want to know is what type of character class we are. So we're going to go over the five basic character classes and sort of relate them to real life scenarios. So, you know, who, who would be that character class in real life? So the first character class would be the fighters. They are the people that are the first to charge into the battle. They are the people that protect the rest of the party. They are the ones um, who, let's say, are the warriors, and they tend to be very physical. So some real-life equivalents, you know, obviously it would probably be people in the military, it'd be people in law enforcement. The civilian aspects, it would probably be people who are, let's say, um, manual laborers, construction workers. So as a fighter, when you go out into the world, your job is to use your might to protect others. Okay, so another class of adventurer would be the priests. The priests are the people who have the ability to call upon the power of the gods for healing, for ritual magic, however that is. I think that's a pretty easy correlation in real life as we do have real life priests, we have real life shamans, we have, you know, medicine men, medicine women, all kinds of people who who know how how to be effective healers, whether it's on the mental or, or physical or spiritual level. Healers in real life could also be, let's say, doctors or paramedics. It's not just, it's not just, let's say, the church or clergy. As a priest, when you go out into the world, your job is to use your compassion to heal and help others. Then we have the thieves. The thieves are the ones who rely on their dexterity and also their mental guile in many circumstances as well. A thief is generally considered the treasure hunter of the group. You know, a classic thief archetype would be, let's say, Robin Hood. Very good with a bow, very dexterous, also a master of disguise. All right, so in real life, we could probably view thieves as being, let's say, a computer hacker, whether they are an ethical hacker or otherwise, we could view them as also being perhaps attorneys and lawyers. They could also perhaps represent people that are into cells or perhaps entrepreneurs. As a thief, your job is to go out into the world to be the devil's advocate and to find weaknesses within the structures that we create. Okay, so next is the mage class. And the mages are also the wizards. They are probably labeled as book smart. They are generally very studious and they are very knowledgeable about a lot of things. Some real life examples might be, let's say, scientists, mathematicians, physicists, any type of profession that we see a person doing a lot of cerebral work. As a wizard, when you go out into the world, your job is to use your intellect to bring up new perspectives and to change the way that we view the world. Okay, so last but not least, we also have the bard class. Now, the bard class is typically a musician, and they have the ability to inspire the team. They're considered a jack-of-all-trades and master of none. So yeah, they may be able to fight, but they're not going to fight as well as a fighter. They may be able to cast spells, but not as well as a wizard, so on and so forth. So some real-life examples of bards would be musicians, artists, writers, um... 
you know, movie directors, any type of person who works in the creative fields. So again, it's through your music and creativity that inspires and strengthens everyone around you. Now, I know I left a lot of other character classes out, but this is really just to give everyone an idea. So if there's a character class that I didn't mention, go ahead and list it in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. So every adventurer has to have the proper gear. One thing that's common amongst all adventurers is what type of jewelry to wear. Now, if you notice, I have a tendency to wear some rings and some necklaces and stuff. Um, and I say that I don't wear jewelry. I wear wards and spells. There is a very calculated and conscious effort that I put into everything that I wear. Whether it be the types of metals that, that it may consist of or whether it can be, you know, the, the symbols etched onto them. So some suggestions into finding the right type of, uh, of gear would be to, you know, perhaps look towards your astrology, look towards your birth month, and to find, let's say, some of the symbolism associated with that. Now, in an RPG, everyone has a role. Everyone serves a very specific function, and if those functions aren't served, the whole team crumbles and everyone dies. All right, it's called a party wipe. So, we don't want a party wipe. We want to accomplish tasks together that are greater than what we can accomplish as individuals. So, one thing that I really think is interesting is that in role playing games, you usually have a party of four or five. And in real life, the old saying goes, you know, show me four of your friends and I'll show you your future. And I think the cross and the similarities between the two are actually quite striking because it's also been proven, you know, both in psychological terms, mental health terms, and also in terms of how well we do in life, our, our material success. If we have a healthy network of at least four to five allies, then we have, generally speaking, a much more fulfilled and and plentiful life, an abundant life. Again, as humans, we are still social creatures and we we need friends and we need each other. So again, having a team to work with us, a team of allies to work with us throughout our life is, is very beneficial. So the idea in trying to consciously carve a successful life is that we want to know who we are as individuals and also how we fit in the greater spectrum of things, which is why you want to assemble your adventuring party. You know, they could be our close friends, they could be family, sometimes it might not be them. The idea is to find the allies in your life that you can grow with. What made us very successful as individuals in the past was the ability to form teams with other individuals. We all knew what our strengths and weaknesses were, and we all knew what we could bring to the table. I think a lot of that has gotten lost because we have just become so sort of antisocial uh, throughout the past couple of years. One thing that's really concerning is that as we go through time, especially as technology starts to infiltrate our lives more, we're finding that people, despite all the connections that we have, we are also very disconnected as well. And also a lot of this has led to, let's say, a lot of social anxiety. It's led to a lot of, uh, a lot of the chronic mental health problems, I believe, in which, you know, we're encountering. Of course, you know, the the last couple of years didn't really help out either. We're going through some hard times as human beings. If we have a tendency to become too antisocial, you know, we've, we've already lost as people. Our nature as human beings is to be social. Our nature is to make friends. Our nature is to create communities. And while the online world definitely has its advantages, I think it's also important to balance those skills out with the real world as well. Well, I think that's about all for today. Thank you for joining me. If you resonate with what you're hearing or what you're seeing, then please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Once again, thank you all. Much love and blessings. I love you all. And now we shall close with a chant of Obleron. Aonde sorte, aonde Obleron, aonde sorte. Aonde you blew